Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, today we're going to be doing some more digital drawing. Um, <clears throat> I have two that I want to do. I want to uh, demonstrate, but I also have two uh, other ones of ones I've done before, and I wanted to talk a bit about the, um, the sort of the th the thought processes thought process behind um, these because I have them um, saved in layers. <clears throat> so the first image we have here is of this. It's quite funny. It's this really trashy image of a uh, photograph of <laughs> I don't like a woman in some kind of cracked den. It's so gnarly. Um, it's like one of the gnarliest selfies I've I've done. But I, I really like this image. I, I love my figures and scenes. I, I I like a bit of environment. I quite like the the, the distortion aspect to it as well. So um, I I tried that out with the digital study. You can see here I have an example of it midway through. Um, how I almost position my canvas when I'm working digitally, um, have it over to the, the, the left uh, and then draw on the right, kind of how like I would do it traditionally. Um, I like to keep it roughly the same scale uh, when I'm working, here's a bit bigger, but uh, at least in the initial, um, initial start, I like to keep it one to one ratio roughly, you know, it's somewhere around there so I, I can have everything contained within one thing and get those core shapes down. So let's open up the uh, Photoshop file of that because this is when I was working on Photoshop and we have, here we go, baby phone it's called. So with this image <clears throat> I, was very I was very much attracted to this sort of uh, very, I don't know, the colours are, are kind of gross. Uh, so, whenever I look at something, I try and establish what is the predominant color. Like, if it was boiled down to one color, what that color would be. Um, whether it's vibe or anything else, um, usually it's quite obvious. This one, to me, it was this piss, piss yellow is the only way I could describe it. So, I, I basically tried to, you know, I was trying to pick that shade on its own in isolation and just cover it, cover it with, um, Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more. Uh, cover it um, in in this color. So at least on, you know, on like an abstract level, it reflects <laughs> what it is I'm I'm depicting. Um, just as like the wash, and even like an incomplete wash, this kind of like streakiness uh, adds to that sort of ugh, gross quality. And so uh, then the next um, the next step would be, okay, let's try and establish some shape here, shape is important, but um, what colour would that be? And that could kind of a, a shit, a shit brown really, like it, in keeping with the, with the theme, it kind of like a slightly dulled um, uh, brown, um, and this is how I started to sort of establish shapes very quickly, very gesturally uh, essentially, but so I need to just lay something down. Um, these, these layers don't usually take me, you know, I'm usually blast them out because I, I still want to be quite responsive to uh, what it is I'm, I'm uh, depicting. And um, I didn't, I don't want to put the figure in yet either. I don't want to put a figure in an environment that I do, don't know where it sits, even though it's quite a, a centerpiece. I felt like I needed to do the background and stuff first. Um, so I continue with that, establish the floor a bit, um, mess around within the same uh, color field. Uh, yeah, and um, then I felt like uh, maybe like I think with each bit of bit of new color I add, I um, I try and I get get more of the shape down in as well. Um, so here I kind of blo this is where I sort of blob in the figure. I so, said, okay, let's just plop it in there and see. Um, and then I think, yeah, like with each with each new thing, it's a little bit more refinement as I'm adding adding in these new layers. But refinement with still using the sort of same colors. And then I think here there's like a, a tertiary color. It's a kind of a pink, like a, a dulled pink. And you see, it's, it keeps I keep just sort of messing around a little bit. Here's this uh, essentially a refinement ref refinement phase. Um, I mean that's just that. Uh, slowly sort of emerging, just refining, 
keeping on going essentially with that. And then here is, uh, you know, I was looking at it, looking at it, and yeah, a lot of things don't work because I think this is quite important to establish this sort of wall, this 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 dull down wall. And you see a bit more baby shape, a bit more shape coming together, more refinement, more like correct color decisions. I think I just sort of leave it at there that one. Um, obviously it's like, well, where do you take this next? And I, I, I still find working this very flat, very, um, shapely way, uh, where a lot of it is push and pull and, you know, just color picking there, adding to it or color picking there and taking away a very, a very negative and positive sort of, um, way of constructing an image. So say this one with Hillary, which, um, I'll, I'll put up the, uh, reference here right now. This one of Hillary was taken off of uh, just a Skype, uh, a Skype session, a group hangout. So um, with this, you can see I take similar approaches, but this one I tried to see how far I could take this sort of posterization um, of refining shapes um, using like really it's not monotone, but as as little colors, monochromatic, as little colors as I possibly could, just like uh, simplify it to like orange and this kind of dull green um, relationship that's happening, uh, grouping a lot of color together. And so you can see it sort of slowly come together. I put in the necessary shapes that help do other shapes, but I know that I'll have to paint over this and, you know, the whole layering thing. A um, bit more line for drawing. Um, oh no, I don't think I used that one, just the red ones. A um, bit more, like, incredibly cartoonish it can look uh, at the start, but that sort of, is just simplification, it's just intense simplification that makes that happen. I really don't want to have all these details yet. All that realism and all that juice does come in those, like, edges and stuff, but my argument is that they're a lot easier to place down once, like, just the inherent drawing is sort of established, and the inherent like rough color relationships is happening. Um, it's a lot more sort of design heavy, but I think you can have like more control over what it is you end up doing um, if you're working in this sort of quite illustrative, again, not even illustrative, it's sort of just shape based. So here I, I try and do lines, not quite working, and then I, I go back over it. You know, I'll, I'll introduce line back into these blobs to try and conceptualized structure a bit more sometimes, but knowing that I'll, I'll draw over them again and sort of rinse and repeat, so you see here, I still want, I, did, I wanted to keep flow. So I think I get it to like this point where I'm like, okay, I can't really take it much further than here without adding like more color or, or more aspects to it. And it's sort of within this layer, boom, you see, boom. Like that's when all the realism comes from. Um, it's almost, I, I think I can break this down into, um, multiple, uh, wait, let's, let's do this, I could break this down into the, the layers, so I think I start adding that, like, dulling it down, trying to make it more realistic and that, it's less fun, but a bit more browns, a bit more of that, a few, like, purpley, in-between colors, sort of trying to get that vague shape, a bit of blue to, because I think things were getting, like, so dull there, I had to, like, bzz, have, have some zing in it. And there is some sort of blue that's kind of festering around in the environment. And so a lot of it here you see is, is actually, a, you know, if you're kind of blobby and these sort of, the, the, the edges that happen um, when you start adding all these colors as well. Um, so I, I, you see I continue, I continue to add to it like this. You see, boop, boop, continue, continue and then work with these ones and then but it's still very much the same process of, of it's kind of a back and forth with each progressive iteration and I could see that I could take this further and further but it's uh, like a sculptor each sort of problem is getting smaller and smaller to um, to resolve um, it's just a lot more like minute little things and, uh, you know, maybe like line could come back here or it depends on what I want really. But this, this one, I would imagine necessitates some realism to get the, the proper like vibe of what's going on. Um, but I, I'm not necessarily interested enough to, to 
like continue further. Um, maybe if it was an actual like traditional oil painting, sure. But um, so that's sort of you can see like the the real stark difference. Um, if I group these together between sort of cartoon and realism, um, see, but like nothing really changes in the shapes very much. Like uh, like a little bit, but it's very much the same image and this kind of goes in line with that whole 80-20 thing I talk about or or, or spoke about in last, the last video I'm trying to get like trying to resolve as much of the problems as humanly possible in the, in the first sort of section and then every other decision can be um, made in relation to that um, but it's a sort of it's a sort of method of uh, limiting a lot of the variables so you can play around with them a lot but still being fairly diligent in placing them in the right area until you get the feel because we're sort of at the beginning we are wrestling with that kind of the, the felt quality of it whether we're getting the feeling or not and if you sort of simplify it you could you can more easily see whether it's working or not like is it like like the the, the question I might have with color is it too cool or too warm just simplify it to that or you know which way does it need to go it's very obvious kind of things like that um, and nothing more that much um, but it, it changes piece uh, to piece but let's let's start with uh, drawing live and, and see uh, how we can make that work but again bye bye Photoshop I'll see you later. Right, so <laughs> today's uh, drawing that I'm going to be working on is of this guy. And he's actually an Inktober prompt, prompt for Kenyo. Uh, he's quite a character, if I'm perfectly honest. We found him in a, um, you know, there's like weird, well, m maybe you don't, but there's sometimes on you know, Instagram you get added to like weird chats with like sex bots and stuff like that, uh, where it's just like a... A uh, fake sexy lady trying to get you to, I don't know, pay the money somehow. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but uh, Theo, he found this guy t talking to the bots in one of these random chats he, would add he was added to. And uh, <laughs> he shared the profile. And this guy is, is such a, a fascinating person. We've been lo he, he posts like really uh, earnest, um, but quite strange images some of them like slightly sexual like you can see it's a little bold in some of these is like nipple hanging out but to be honest it's nothing really uh, it's nothing really harmful it's it's just a bit weird and his responses are like his comments on his images are always very strange they're almost like they are written by um bots hello waiting for your message okay Hello, try to send me a message so that we can talk more, okay. And this guy, his responses are always so strange. We try and talk to him, and, <laughs> and but he doesn't really seem very responsive. But he does actually post really Im interesting imagery um, that I think would be great to draw. So I picked out this one. I really just want to try drawing this one. I like the atmosphere in it. <laughs> and this guy in this like really crazy color pink in this moody atmosphere. It's... It's so bizarre. And I quite like this one as well. <laughs> it's just sort of it's, uh, sat in bed. Uh, like, incredibly unflattering. <laughs> Why? Uh, hope all is well, babe. Um, siren. Uh, whoop. So, I'm going to be working on him. I think I'll try with uh, I'll try with this this one here first, and then I'll go on to that one, um, and do a bit more of a developed study on that maybe. Uh, we'll see. I'll use Krita again. Um, use Krita again for this, and well, I guess we'll, we'll get going. Um, let me just arrange my workspace. Okay, <clears throat> so looking, I'm looking at this bluish, pinkish, greenish one here, and um, seeing how I might start this one. I mean, 
it'll always have some level of simplification. It has to, especially when the more complex of an image you're dealing with, the the more simplified you have to go um, to get all the elements in. Um, I want to just sort sort of draw a bounding box with the, with the kind of just a, any pink really. Oop. I don't know how to do straight lines on Cretia, like snap it to a straight line, but we'll we'll be dealing with this, I think. So let's zoom into that a little bit. Johans. Um, I'll try with a, a blue, just a kind of a midnight purpley blue. We've got pink, we've got blue, we've got green. So pink and blue, that's, that's kind of purple. So we can kind of um, settle on that for maybe like a, a mean color, you know what I mean, like a mean average color. Uh, I won't make it too uh, predominant. I might make it a little bit more blue actually. And I'm just going to draw just draw a background with that. It really doesn't matter, a bit big of a brush. Almost, there's almost nothing for it to play against, apart from what I can really see is just where it sort of comes up to um, horizontally, no, uh, vertically, sorry, here, yeah, like proportionally. Um, almost like that. It's it's not quite, it's a bit above a 50-50. Like maybe 50-50's there. Um, mm. You always want some level of as asymmetry anyway. Um, you, you know, usually the rule of thumb when you're dealing with like anything like landscapey is, um, you know, the sort of rule of thirds. So two thirds sky, one third foreground, or vice versa. But I'm actually kind of interested in this image because it's slightly off in quite a few ways, <laughs> like where he is uh, situated. Um, Compositionally, it's just it's all a little awkward, and that's kind of why I like it. Um, so let's go. Let's let's get some kind of bluish green. Um, and these colors might be hard with this color picker. Uh, let's see. So it's actually it's like a this kind of green, perhaps, maybe. Let's just fill it, fill it in and see. And then I'm just going to simplify him and his shirt to this same sort of pinkish color. So it comes up to about there. So if I was, if I were to split him, like another uh, proportional thing, you can see I'm using almost the, the bottom here where it come, falls along this line down here. Um, plotting that. And then I'm, I'm going to give him like a, a, a hot pink. Uh, there-ish, maybe. I mean, maybe it's a little bit more intense, just to see. And then his head kind of fits in over here. So those are our core colors. And so I, what I could do is I could spend a long time just refining these to try and get these sort of silhouette shapes right. Um, don't want to spend too long in this thing because we always need like other elements to help inform these elements. Um, are they working? Are they working just yet? Yeah, they sort of are. It's, it, everything sits, at least from the screen that I'm working from, everything sits in this really dulled, um, dulled yet vibrant image. Let's have a go. Let's have a go like this. So that let's let's start a bit of drawing. Let's okay. Let's go with this. Let's make it a bit bluer. So what I might do is, you know, I can see whether just the the shape of the uh, the color um, field is correct or not, uh, and then just change it very easily. Still paint over it. Not use like the fill tool or anything like that. Let's have a little bit of a, a light blue at the top there. I'm being just. I'm quite clumsy with these colors just because I really don't know how this color picker works, but it doesn't matter too much. We we could we could classify that if if we were being like this is the only elements we have, then we could sort of put that in um, the little thing in the background. Uh, but it doesn't really work, and you could also just use the same color there. It almost acts as the white. Like a kind of there's like a line that come that comes through like this, and then uh, sort of a, a dark hole. Almost, 
you, know, you could look at sort of this interaction of shapes here and plot things. I might, I might, maybe I'll use, I won't use black, but I'll use uh, a sort of a kind of crimson again. This kind of color, maybe not. It's not really crimson, but it's dulled. I'll use that. I'll use that to do a bit of drawing with. Need a bit of line, maybe. We are, we just don't, we don't have that much elements to be dealing with in this image. It's, it's going to be a strange one to digitally draw. Um, let's let's give it a go. So it helps to know, you know, a bit about <laughs> uh, simplification of or how to like construct a face. You know, just the ge generic proportions, uh, like you know, like a center line and shit like that, just to uh, be a bit more liberal with certain things. Let's get a bit. Let's get a bit. Bit warmer, a bit darker, because there is a clear sort of distinction there, and because he's in the foreground, objects that are in the foreground will always be more contrasted than ones in the background. It's called atmospheric perspective, and it's you. You see it why mountains are blue. It's just sort of a general thing that happens, and it happens on a very small, subtle scale. But it's a way to imply depth that uh, will always work. Just reduce the contrast as it as it kind of fades into. The distance um, it will always sort of serve you well. So I'm probably not going to get his like um, exact f facial, whatever you call it. Um, his f you know likeness exact. I might I might I might actually change the color here just to distinguish it. I think it's it becomes harmful if I I keep a stab like I keep having it be one and the same thing as the shirt so I'm just gonna like before I really add these things I'm gonna I'm gonna do this get a bit of that shoulder it kind of comes to the right a bit more and this green does come out a bit more here as you can see so let's just extend that just a little bit it kind of comes like this Like thing like that, trees. Here you go, a bit of sky. I'm just I'm painting down like this, so I can then paint up with it here, like paint over it. You see. So we sort of we're getting the the Johans thing a bit. His face might be a bit chunkier. Um, fill in this a bit more, come down a bit more. You can see some of these shadows in that are actually getting to be like this kind of warmer, warmer, more intense uh, thing. So I might just uh, get a little bit more of an intensity there and just do a few lines. Just, just very small lines, indicating lines. So I don't want to give it too much description. At least not yet. I don't want to be adding all these creases in yet. Uh, at least too much. They just might not be even relevant. Uh, so I can look at this, and it's yeah, it's getting there. This maybe this this green is too pungent. I quite like this. Uh, I do quite like the how it's looking though. But I'm gonna for the sake of it, I'm gonna try and get a little bit more like realistic on them. So if I, I get this green, I get this exact exact green. And a way to harmonize these colors would just the most simple way usually is just to dull them. Um, and it will limit that gamut just a little bit. So I'll limit this green ever so slightly. So by making it like kind of a bit blacker, it will actually just also become a bit bluer. I'm gonna make it a bit blacker. I don't really want to change the value that much. Um, so is that a hue shift I've got to do? Let's 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 see. So what will that do? Hmm. Let's, let's try with this. It's not. It's 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 a small change, but I'll put it in. I'll maybe keep some. It it does sort of gradate from the left to right anyway. The kind of light. I'll just put it in a bit and have it sort of respond a bit and have some of these other greens still within it. That'll be fine. Color pick here. Push back. Johans. No, 
um, maybe do a bit of his face. It's got a bit of like lens distortion going on here, so it's, it's actually he's actually tilting his head back just a little bit more than that. Painting and working from selfies is quite an interesting one because there is a lot of weird lens distortion going on. And you sort of have to adapt to it or put it in, but sometimes when you put it in it just looks like weird proportions. Uh, it can be quite good, uh, but it leads to a little bit of caricaturization, but I don't mind that. I push his mouth just up a little bit. Really the mouth, the most important parts of the mouth you've got to do is just either corner. Those are the darkest parts of the mouth, always, because this is, this is where skin is touching skin and making that kind of occlusion shadow. Other, dark, other darkest points, used below the nose is quite an obvious one, and sort of, it's sort of like the innermost bit here with the eye, like here. Um, those are the main parts of a face, the anchor points. Uh, get a sort of chin here. It does kind of just like stretch, <laughs> stretch out like quite a bit. It almost like triangulates like that slightly, so I might need to adhere to that triangulation. There you go, that's a bit more like it. I can see that this needs to be a bit warmer. I'll make it a little bit warmer as I correct the shape. No, it hasn't really done much, but... <laughs> Yellow hands. Um, you know what, I kind of, I think I, I think I quite like this, like this. <laughs> this is looking so ridiculous right now, but let's, let's keep going with it. See what we get out of it. So, I'm going to dull these in the background. Like I was saying, things get it's it's gonna fade in with that kind of blue smog a bit more. So let's try and do that just a bit. Blue, but it it's, doesn't even get that blue. It's sort of maybe like this. A bit better, a bit darker maybe. Oh, a bit better, just a sort of grey. And then actually, this is more like a more like a dark red. Dull brown. Oh, duller, 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 duller. Bit more intense. That's more like it. So these these very dark. You see these these ones aren't working. They they are they are too. They're not warm enough. Basically, they've got to be warmer. <clears throat> the valley is roughly right, but they're they're not warm enough. Um, they just gotta be warmer. So I'm gonna add like I might just actually straight up take them away. Add a bit more warmth. It doesn't seem to be doing much on the screen, but it's subtle, but it, I think it needs to happen. Might draw s oh dear, might draw some of these shapes a bit more with this. So that line comes more like crosses through there. Not like that. I will undo that thing because kind of like that. His nose gets a lot bigger down the bottom. Kind of comes out like that. I need some shadow. And this comes down just a little bit more. And then that would also make this whole thing come down just a little bit more. Because he's a bit more imposing in the frame. I haven't quite got this angle right. This angle is sort of triangular. 
angle. I do like to break a lot of things down into triangles when I work. I find that helps a lot. Or just rectangles. I might want to change what's going on over here. Um, I make it a bit bluer, but a bit dark at the same time. So you don't want to have this, this these harsh edges too much. I want to like more fill that in like this. Is that working? Let's have a go. Let's just plop it in and see. Hmm. No, it needs to be less, less aggressive. I'm going to keep it in that kind of, in the same value range it was. Bring that down, bring this down. See, I mean, I do think I can take this too much further digitally. Um, I'll give it a go. light breaking color here. Kind of gets a bit cooler. See, I'm not really changing much of the, uh, the value, just, just the hue a little bit. Make it a little cooler. Fit in with this sort of midnight blue that's kissing everything here have it kind of come down on the lights, but not actually use like light for it, like a lighter tone, because that will disrupt the sort of valley structures a bit more. This could go a little duller. Yeah, maybe that dull. You want to have those darker fleshy parts be too, um, too warm, because then it will make the skin look really weird um, and not pleasant. So let me try and maybe adjust these colors just a teensy bit more. Yeah, I might, I might actually make that a little, a little more blue, a little, like his sort of five o'clock shadow. That's not really blue, that's more brown. Let's just slide that over there like that. I think it's in these shadows. See these shadows now, I think they're appropriate for that, but they weren't appropriate for this, so more pink, please. Is that working? Mm. I'm not sure I like what I did there. It's 
So when I'm not sure I like, I have to just sort of scrap everything I've done and kind of go again. Because I'm sort of caught in between two different, um, two different, like half drawing, half trying to maintain the drawing, half trying to change the color. And uh, really, you got to go back and just change the whole color and then start again. Like it didn't take that long in the first place to uh, to plot down. So second time over, it's not going to be too bad. Oh, those things can just sort of get confused. I'm gonna I'm gonna try keeping it with a, that kind of warmish shadow this time. This ever so slightly. lost that sense of his big bulging head though. Maybe I'll simplify like this. See what happens if I zoom in. Okay, so it's a lot easier to see like facial proportions when you do go a bit in, but you don't want to lose that kind of quicker mentality of doing things. So I refined it for a bit there, so I'll zoom out a little bit again. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can see how that, that I mean, it makes everything look better. Um, just the, sort of the way it is. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's enough, it's enough of him that I maybe might go back and, and, and do the rest around that aesthetic now a little bit more. Like, if, if maybe use some of those lines. Mm, let's see. But I use the same treatment uh, looking around him a bit more. Like I'm zooming in too. 
I'm zooming into the uh, initial reference um, as I have on, on, on the left there um, just so I can get in there a bit more and see those sort of smaller shapes keep the brush relatively small but let's have a look Okay, so obviously I'd have to re redraw these lines here. They were just sort of there to plot where I am. Maybe this dark one here. It kind of comes down like this. Just plucking this kind of warmish thing uh, here. Maybe I'd go a little bit cooler. I don't really want to get into that minute aspect yet, though. See, like when depicting this grass, we could uh, we could use some marks to make it grass like like we could like just like make this kind of texture everywhere, and then paint over it back again, and have like just little 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 remnants of it just sort of littered around. Uh, we only want to we only want to need the impression of of. Uh, grass uh, as much as it you know needs to be like that eradicate all this sort of this blue line here because it, it it layers over it so I want to get back into this shape up here, get that kind of nailed. A little bit bluer. I mean, it's it's almost it's, it's actually it's it really does do a good job of fading into the background there, doesn't it? This this other color. Yeah, I want to. I want to really kind of compress that valley back into the darkness more than anything. Um, it could be a bit blue. It could be a bit more like that if I want it to be, which I might. It might end up being. And then this is like dull as fuck. Shh, 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 shh. But I quite. I quite like that tiny little triangle. I quite like that tiny little triangle being. A sort of slightly related to what's going on here in the foreground. Like, say if I was doing it more realistically, maybe a bit more like that, or maybe not like that. A bit more red, perhaps. It really it really does sort of fade away, but I quite, I, I want to make it related to this sort of foreground pink somewhat, so. So yeah, more like that, I, I quite like. Yeah, you don't really get much. Let's put that. Let's put that down. Let's get that color that we were using there. A little bit lighter. Kind of. You want to do it very quickly. Uh, it would, so it sucks if like you do this traditionally, because then you got to paint the green again. And I'll do that. Uh, that's what I, I like to try and force myself to act as if I was doing it traditionally with layering paint. So this kind of bit would would be like one of the final marks at the end or something like that you know this is going to sit on top oh dear I'm going to undo with for now just because I, I'm not going to sit here and do it again I, was, I just wasn't concentrating I've got to really know where I'm going with this line it's sort of like <laughs> it's not even like that it's more like that and this one like this. I don't even like it that much. But I don't like it as as much as it is now. So I don't think this image is like gonna <laughs> you know, get that far. But 
you know. So I, st I still won't be happy until these like shapes are properly set. It's like that needs to come up a little bit if I'm if I want to be a bit smaller, perhaps. Here, maybe play with edges or something like that. Uh, like I play with this sort of overlapping that. I make marks that kind of are slightly indicative of trees, but so I mean I might leave that one there because I don't really like it. I don't think I'll get much out of it. I could do it, but it's a lot of time invested into something that. Um, I'm not all that caring about. I'll, I'll try more with the next one. Let's give it a little crop. Maybe it would go here. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, quite like some parts of it, <laughs> but it wasn't much I was going with. But, you know, I'll move on. Um, round two. So, let's move on to the main one. Um, one that's a bit more of a portrait, so to speak. Uh, it's quite an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> the lighting will be quite important with this, so it might be hard to get digitally, but I want to get the shape for sure. And it's it's a very it's a very simple shape. It's almost like a, a rectangle, uh, another rectangle, and that's about it. That's all you're really getting, and then these sort of slightly diagonal lines of the curtain. Um, compositionally, but uh, we're still going to break it into into color, and so I, I see just a relationship between uh, greens and d dulled pinks, maybe uh, orange, perhaps I could go. Um, but uh, I'll try green and pink, uh, green, pink, orange, mainly green though. A green lighting from his computer screen or something that's going on. So let's get that green. Um, what kind of green would you describe as? It's kind of it's kind of bluish, but it's also kind of dark, so it's, it's kind of brown, really. I want to exaggerate it slightly, make it a bit more like toxic. Um, and I guess it's got a bit of the blueness, so it's, it's sort of this cyan y type thing. Let's, let's get a big one. I don't like working too much with the line. It just so if we're saying the rectangle thing, it's it's almost just that, <laughs> like that's the composition. Um, very simple. Uh, I'm not even like referencing it, but that's all it essentially is. And from there, I can kind of move on. Um, that plus let's fill it to the edge. That plus this. I'm gonna go with orange. I feel like more orange than pink. You know, I can see it being pink. Yeah. Um, block, not that orange, not that dark. Mm. Let's try this. Kind of like that. And then it's a sort of, it's a sort of triangle really, isn't it? The top another sort of triangle is this big chin comes forward to the camera, it's not the whole pose is actually kind of quite triangular like that, you know, like whoop. Um, let's work with this a little bit, I might, I might, so like, when I'm presented with something like this, I've got these two colours, the composition's drop. What, what, what's most wrong, most wrong colour? So I'm going to go with more of these pinks, let's see what happens, just change it to pink, that's a bit better. You see, I can make very easy decisions like that, that's better, better or worse, that's better for what I'm feeling. It's, it's now too dark, but it's still better than the other thing. So I'm going to get a bit lighter. See, that loses a lot of its personality, and I don't want that. So, nope. Just paint over it, paint over it, paint over it. So I'm kind of getting it. Too dull. Hmm. 
it's kind of hard to not judge this um, so I'm going to try and just draw the shape because I can't seem to really I need some more shape before I decide, decide what's going on here I think there'll be a lot more drawing based issues with this anyway I almost need a dark to to have one 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 third uh, one other thing to pay off as so it's going to be this kind of brown there'll be like a, a very dull very very dull brown um, could almost be like this grey let's try that um, might like draw with it you know mm. see this. This is why I might just use a, a gradient when I'm painting in real life to, to do that, to do the face. Um, I'm not going to play with gradient, I still want to work with solid color with, with digital. I'm going to just take that to the edge there. Uh, let's get let's get like a kind of a lighter uh, green. So it isn't really that that dark in value. Let's just change the whole thing a bit. And see that having some of the marks still respond to the directional strokes of the background. So coming together a bit more in terms of the colors that I want. If I want them to have this moodiness, then maybe I should not try with too much color. Let's, let's see how far we can take this, this shadow that we got here. His, his eyes all sort of... Maybe I could draw the eyes with color rather than the darkness. <laughs> completely wrong but see this kind of cartoon can get his expression then that's cool like it will make his mouth like wider you know I want to get that feel more than anything chin down here let's keep going with it Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get this color in, and I want to see what yellow is actually gonna be looking like. Almost greenish yellow, it's the color of the light. I mean that looks freaking horrible, um, way too much. But maybe I I should get that and push it more that way. And then maybe that will work. Mm, no, it's got it's got a little bit more personality than that, this colour. Hmm, too dark. Let's just go back here. Hmm. Let's get some of this valley in the right spot. That might work. Let's just sort of cut this kind of downlit light and come up and hit him. There is some of this like minty green within it, you see. So I, I don't want to get too far away from that. That could, that might that might be what we're after. That kind of yellow. So with color, I do I do fumble around a lot like this. Um, wrong color. Nope. Another color. Another color. Another color. Just layer on top until it's roughly right, and then from there, work it out. So if it kind of comes a bit here and a bit like here, and then you, I mean you get the same kind of lights hitting them over here, but they are almost affected a lot more by this sort of green haze. So it kind of gets a bit like greenish around, like the back ends over here. You see. Actually that pattern, that pattern's gonna be so fun to do. But 
you have to hold off as much as you can doing all these like little tiny details because you don't you they have to sit on top uh, of what we're doing. I, I quite like the vibe of this actually, whether it's your hands or not. I, I I like it. I like this red here that's happened. And sometimes that when you don't overthink in this early stage too much about like color, then you might get these happier accidents. And what I might need to do is just darken that just a bit. It's, it kind of goes into like a purpley realm. Um, maybe warmly browny sort of dark. Mm. I've got that color, I might play with it a bit. It might work. Then his top of his head gets like really this kind of really brown. Brownish orange, not that dark. I am squinting a lot when I do this. Because I'm just trying to get these color fields down. I might need to do that dark bit just a little bit darker. Now I've put that dark in of the hairline. It might, it might need to be a little bit more neutral still. Maybe, maybe it'll absorb some of that green, you know. I'll try that, I'll try that. Oof, that's not working. Is it working? Hard to tell. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it around a little bit more. Could be a bit too dark. Hmm. No, I'll go, I'll go back to this brown and then modify it a bit more. To make it grey. Yeah, grey. See, grey sort of works. It's in between a bit of them both. change this this general field of the chest area it's a bit more yellow because a bit more of that light is hitting it a bit more sort of natural what the hell color is this that's not correct that's better it's actually quite complex this what's going on color wise so now I can see that again I like this green in the background but Mm, I'm not like massively about it. There's a pillow there. Pillow there. Crease. It is a bit darker. I do need to get a bit darker, so. Maybe this. How's that working? Snap. Pardon me. Now I might crop it, just see uh, that I've roughly got things. No, not really. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fiddle around just a teeny bit more, then I'll crop it. I'll get back. A bit more, refine some shapes, and then crop, and then see where we're at. And then try to fit everything within that. This, something isn't really going right here with this this being green, this being like this brown, and it's a few uh, inconsistencies with the uh, the dark. So I think like this was better when it was like this dark red. It seemed to go like progressively going more red, and then that, I think that would also be true of this bit here. These like ultimate shadows. See, I don't think that would be that dark either. Let's try this. Get a bit better. So how are we looking? I'll try cropping. Crop, crop, crop. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. I've actually done this head just a little bit too big. I haven't quite got that narrowness either. So now I might need to start thinking a bit more about drawing after thinking about colour for too much. So I want to get these slight shifts in um, form described a little bit, but I don't want to harm too much the sort of structural integrity of certain things. I might take that away a bit. You see, it's only after I add a lot of these color fields that I might actually use these more traditional drawing ele like elements and aspects, um, like the line or the shape of the ear, or you know, thinking about things like that. Bulbous nose. I want a bit more of this intense green back in. I liked it. Just sort of permeating around just a just a little bit here or there. So this 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 thing is maybe adequately grey, but it's not adequately tonally right. This one is more right. I'll group this together. These things in the foreground are not as intense colorwise as the face. They all sit roughly within the same sort of sphere of color. This can get a bit darker down here though. This is see it won't it won't I don't think it has that much personality either. A bit more yellow and it will be more green and therefore more within what we already sort of have push it, push things further to green Which I, what I like to do is like I, I fuzz my eyes or blur my eyes, it's like the opposite of squinting and it sort of just opens up the, the colour a bit more and I'm, and I'm just looking at sort of how this colour is uh, responding mm. Ways to sort of diffuse the regular way of 
observing that you that you just sort of are. You have to keep switching them around. I'll do a bit more um, foreground uh, chest area. Things. This might be a little bit more green. More. Ah. Color pick. Modify. Sort of a lot of color picking and modifying, and that's very much kind of what you'd like to do in real painting. Um, if you have like a batch of color on your palette. Um, you just, I, have, I usually have these big batches, and then I just, I modify them slightly or push them in one area. They get these big, the big ones that describe big fields of color, and then, yeah, from there, modify, modify. Okay, so let's just uh, change the value of that slightly. I still don't think it's adequately green enough. Bit of his, the shape of his cheeks. Some of these tiny little dots aren't really doing much favor for anyone. It's adding too much specificity too soon. Let's take a look at what we got. Okay, still doing some work. Maybe let's get a bit darker up top. Maybe like vignette it a bit more. It's still kind of gross. Sometimes when you're adding too much, it just sort of ruins it. Let's go back to the green for, for now. See, if I think I have that, if I have that green in there, it needs to sort of exist a little bit more everywhere else, perhaps. It's like within his flesh, you see. I don't know how much I want to do that. I think I'm, I think the, the way my palette is going, it's it's shifting more towards wanting to be um, a little warmer than this, a little bit less intense. Let's try and do that with the green. Warmer. Actually, I'm making it a bit more intense. But yeah, that's better. That's sort of better. And then this becomes like a, a very warmish. Warmish, greenish, brownish around here. Just the sort of shadows of his thing. So a lot of these times I'll be picking the color, modifying, again this color pickup, I've got, I've got to get more used to it, it's slightly more simple in real life, uh, because I'm like pressing buttons and I don't know what's happening with color, there you go, I wanted a bit more yellowiness rather than the pink. See this never this this point down here doesn't actually exceed brightness. Uh, like the most of the light is actually hitting him on his lower chin, and the, the kind of a spotlight effect there. Um, so I don't really want to detract from that down here. That's a bit better.
eliminate some of that white because it's not really helping anything right now. Okay, that was too strong, too strong, too strong. really tricky one because this is incredibly subtle and sometimes this posterization way of working doesn't won't initially flow well with that let's establish what a, a, a shadow in green will look like and that will be a sort of yellowy brownier come on yellowy brownier green not that saturated though, it'll be duller. It won't be that dark either. Yeah, that'll work. So I can cut, start putting that in the background a bit more. Down here, sort of the same, but a bit darker. Yep. Hmm, bit, bit, bit duller. How do we go duller? Or maybe duller is just a bit warmer. Still a bit harsh, still a bit harsh. These tiny little these tiny little transitional bits of colour, they make a huge difference. Like what the darkest darks are and what temperature they are, you've really gotta be wary of it. A little bit of spotlight here. That kinda happens. I still got the streaky streaky. A bit streaky streaky up here. Like we don't necessarily need to uh, draw the creases, but that can kind of do a good enough job. Like maybe certain areas here would just benefit from grouping together more. First off, I, I need to group this shoulder here, just tonally at least. Um, there's a patch here, but I, I might end up ignoring that. Let's, let's get in a bit more. I think we've been working far enough away and I'm more or less happy with the general shape. So let's go in a bit more. Take a little look at it. So I could um, do a new layer here and really fuck around because it's digital and just see what I might do to finish it off. So say like these crazy, the, I like the, like that, like the highlights of the uh, the screen. I'm working digitally, like you can get these, I mean even working traditionally you can kind of get, like I like to give it a punch, a lot of col <coughs> colour into it because I'm also depicting an intensity and uh, sometimes pure white just, I don't know, it doesn't usually work that well. If I put a pure white in there, which is maybe what it would be, I don't know, it doesn't really, and that's not even pure white, that's pure white. It, it doesn't really fit. Well, it actually, it kind of does. Let's go back a sec, though. I can't... I like that green a bit more. I think it does a bit more. I don't know. It's something that I like to do. Uh, I haven't decided with it yet. I'll leave that for later. I'll, I'll noodle it a little bit more. That's just what I'll do. And you can just... I'll put on some music, some beautiful tunes. Hello, Mr. Johans. 
and you can listen with me. I'm just going to... There you go. So now I'm playing more with line. I say I feel a bit more confident with the color choices I've made. Now get bigger brush. So there's just too much color going on in this bottom area so see if I can simplify it. It won't be that it won't be that harsh of a pink, I think that's part of the problem. I'm really gonna push it more in those greys. some of this green to come back. Suddenly these lines are getting a bit too thin now. Sure, I like some of these shapes. Might need another tone in between these two as well. It's kind of deep orange, but not too. how much I like this part. It's too too it's too aggressive. Maybe I need to just compress the valleys a lot more. Abstract it quite a bit because it doesn't really matter, it's just kind of nondescript here. Yeah. So you see this green that we added earlier was was a bit of a problem. Let's try and get that I'll cut that over there and see what happens. That's a bit better. Let's zoom out a bit. <laughs> it's got this kind of bulbous uh, splodge to it. Let's keep going a little bit more before I try and put those resolving touches on. Resimplify a few things. Setting up for that kind of more complicated final layer. So yeah, I don't think that I think that orange is too stark. That's a problem. Push it over there. Yeah the green kinda works, but mm, maybe I'll leave it in and push it around a few other places. see where I might smuggle its way into, which would be these kind of more transitional parts. I mean, it's, when you're dealing with these dark colors, it is a little tricky to see what sort of family they belong to, whether it's greens or reds or whatever. So I'm just playing with that. Okay, with that as a sort of a baseline, I want to put in those, those little patterns and details 
Uh, first off, I'm going to put in those punchy uh, highlights we had earlier. Vibrant as fuck green. I don't want to zoom in and do them, just blop. Blop. To sort of indicate them. That's sort of enough to to go. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe. I could indicate indicate the glasses slightly, but I don't want to be using like a black or something that's just so far removed from what we already have. I just want to indicate them, so I'm gonna like use some of these pre-existing colors. Maybe just maybe just get the highlights of it on the other corner, like there and there, if you see. Um, could be like there and there. And that's sort of enough to make it feel like glasses. If I would do it again, I would do that mark again like this, and maybe here. Is that too thin? That's a little too thin. See, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's too much. But I often work with glasses and eyes and things like that just to... One mark too much, take it back, play again, do it again, do it again, uh, and see what the right balance is uh, in response to everything else. Mm. I'll try. I'll try some um, of the shape in the background. So this could this roughly this tone I think could work for the background. I don't want. I don't want to like invent a whole new color for these little roses. They are this kind of gray thing. Maybe I'll just only ever slightly modify that, just a little bit. See how it looks. Yeah, that that'll work. So I'll do I'll do some of these little roses here or there, kind of indiscriminately, roughly where they appear. <laughs> I like these little roses. They they make it all that little bit more wholesome. But hopefully using some of this this flesh will it'll tie it a bit together like a little bit more than how it was. There are some kind of green ones in there. I might like draw the basic shape with this this thing and um just to plot it out and then go at it again with a different colour. I'll try it now. I'll try, I'll try getting that color, a little bit more green. Gray, I guess. Uh, I'll, I'll put the uh, pen size down just a little bit. Work from a distance as I try to do it. See, so that's just a little dark. That's just a little too dark. So... What was that color? Mm, a bit lighter. A bit greener, maybe, but yellow. Let's draw over that with that. See, so that's not enough. Too light. Too dark. Hopefully, this will be what I need. Let's just draw over that again. Actually, this, this could work. No, no, no. What I had there. Yeah, this this kind of orange. I'll use that. I just sort of want to symbolically get these things down. Their rough gesture, maybe. Some of these edges are a little harsh. Don't want them to be that harsh. Like these thin little lines, they do they do a lot, and I'm gonna get rid of them because they're doing too much here. It's like, it, it draws emphasis, and we, we don't want to have emphasis on those creases. Just because they are thin lines on, the, on their reference doesn't mean we have to give them that much attention. Is that dark line a bit much? It is a bit much. So boop, I'll just remove it like that. Doesn't need to be distinguished. Maybe a little bit here, if anything. I'm 
but this is also too harsh. Some of these bits where that will outline it's a bit much, yeah. It's good to have these patterns flowing off the canvas, make it feel like it sort of keeps on going and going. You don't want to have them like contained within the picture frame because that would just feel weird. Things need to overlap, things need to go in and out and feel just broader than the small frame we sort of have them on the, in the image. So I don't, I don't want to add pattern into the shadow because usually like when things go into shadow you just can't see what the fuck is going on in there so you really don't want to overdo shadows. I think this darkness is, there you go, might be a little bit too much. I think this outline isn't really helping. Noise that one. Maybe it was, maybe it needs just a little one. This chain, the little thing he has down there, the little medallion. He's the green. Probably a bit too green that. Yes. Yellowy, uh, grey. Let's go back to a slightly more blobby, bit bigger. See how we can balance a few things, get some more of that energy of light that we had earlier on that sort of does get lost a bit when you're trying to make things just sort of fit. Something that I could use with a just could that work? It just felt like, it just felt a little too warm. There you go, I think that's working a bit better. It just felt a little bit too warm up there. Yeah, that's more like it. That's a shadowy bit there. There's quite a strong sense of pattern that if I try to simplify, I do lose, and I kind of... Something I would probably spend quite a long time on if I was doing it extended study, but this is a quickie one. I wouldn't, uh, you know... I very much enjoy doing these. Just gonna have them response a little bit more to what's actually going on. And again, some of these thin lines are just obfuscate a little bit, not needed. Line can be good, but it can also take away from that slight realism we want. A bit more light sort of emanating, oozing around, I want a bit of that energy somehow. Don't want to make it look too weird though. Sort of symbolically get that in. Nope, not good. Goes a bit too much. Yeah, a bit better. It goes a bit too thin up there, a bit too thin there. Dots here, and um, yeah, like I quite like this one actually. I might leave the video here now. Um, do
you know, do a, do a, do a new video, do a, you know, do a better one, do a better one, do a better one, that kind of thing, rinse, repeat, repeat, gonna do that a lot, you know. Okay, bad marks, bad marks, pretend that didn't happen. Like, I don't need to get these turns exactly, I don't need to get these proportions exactly. I'm going for vibe here, you see. Maybe... Maybe this is too dark. I have wondered what would happen to these these threads if I started using things like blending. So maybe, just for just for I don't know how it works on this on this um, fucking program, but let's merge all these oh shit merge all these layers together, ah. uh, and then just try and smudge it around a bit because I think that's that's sort of where you're physically painting. The kind of only difference is that you can just kind of manipulate it as it's there. So let's uh, merge with layer below. Okay, there goes merge. So I could manipulate this as one sort of layer. Yeah, shut up. Uh, how would I do that? <laughs> um, blendy brush. I want a blendy brush. How the fuck does this work? Is this a smudgy one? Nope. Eraser. See, these are like the, the texture brushes that I'm sort of I sort of ignore, but they would look good uh, <laughs> if I were to like properly use them. Um, but I wanna I wanna manipulate the layer that I have here. Oop, redo. Christ, what is this? <laughs> the the pixelation one. No, we don't want to see your hands. I mean that it cut like you can like pixelation does kind of work to soften edges a bit. Uh, so it, it sort of does what I want it to do. But okay, that's more of a blendy one. But that's a bit weird. What about that one? Okay, here we go. That's a pure blend one. Mm. Let's see what happens. I might not, I might not have the, the, the greatest control with this. I've never used it. Oh my god, it's very strong. Let's, let's just undo a little bit more and um, change the opacity down. Maybe that's, that means the strength. 20. Oh, sugar. Fuck. <laughs> I say sugar to try and not be swearing, but then I go too far, but whatever. Let's get the edges, the edges make most sense. It's on this background wall. Need a little bit. Might wash it like that. Bit more opacity. This is just, just, this is... Is it really a smudgy one? It is kind of, but... Definitely the foreground would have a fuckload more. No idea what I'm doing. What's this? Just like the painter brush. You see it? It's sort of maybe like more <laughs> realistic painty stuff is coming from it. Let's try and. I mean, this is the equivalent of just getting like a fan brush and going boop, 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 like that. But you could lose some of these magical hard edges doing it. I quite like it though. I do quite like like blur that a little bit, blur that up there. Oh. Ooh, it's kind of horrible. 
kind of good in some ways as well. So maybe from here, like, you do a new layer, get that regular brush, or maybe like a textured one now, and then start, like, grooving a little bit. What's a nice one? Is that one? I don't know what this is. I'm scared of it. Ugh! Okay, let's try that one. It's got a bit of a scratch. I'll, I'll take the opacity down as well, something I don't usually do, but it's the equivalent of a bit of... Ooh, I don't know if I like this. I'm sort of just drawing without the reference now, just trying to make it like a cool image on its own right. So you can have fucking way more fun doing painting like that. I mean, it is more fun doing this kind of stuff, but like, I feel like I've just set myself up for a much easier time by just like when I have when I have all these like fucking blendy, blurry, half dead, like so much, so many things. Uh, it still roughly adheres to that same structural pattern we had with the drawing, but. Um, Definitely gets that effect of light better than what you almost could any other way. I might I might leave it there. I I am curious to see what the fuck uh <laughs> the difference is from a second ago when it was all you know, hard edged. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. Next, next one, I might wanna, I might wanna take this stage further a little bit more, like an actual painting, um, and have that in mind with when I'm actually drawing it. Um, yeah, I hope this was a bit better than last time. Um, I'll see you very soon. Bye.